Okay, so I'm going to do something a little bit different in this video. I bought one of these little exhaust scavenge systems. And I think these are kind of old school. Just welds into the exhaust. And it's supposed to basically scavenge out of the crankcase. And the exhaust flowing past the fitting will create negative pressure inside the hose. And then draw a vacuum on the crankcase. Or just reduce the crankcase pressure. So I've never used one of those before. And I want to test it and see how they work. So I welded this little fitting in here. I just have an AN to barb fitting. 10 AN to barb. And then I'm just using this hose temporarily. And then what I did up here was I used one of these... Uh, oil fill caps with the 10 AN fitting on it, and then I just put a eighth NPT to barb And then I just have a line going over here to a two bar map sensor So what I'll end up doing is I'll go drive it What I think I want to do first is put this cap on there So I'll take this hose off cap it so I get the same situation as if I'm just venting to my catch can and I'll drive it go get into boost a little bit and then I'll put the hose on drive it again, get into boost a little bit, try to replicate the same situation, and then I'll be able to compare the two. So what I'm checking for now is I want to see if there's a noticeable difference, either if it's going to create pressure from the exhaust back pressure and blow it into the crankcase, or if it will reduce the amount of crankcase pressure I have, or if it won't do anything at all. So this is a full exhaust. It has a muffler on the back. So the concern here is that it's going to create enough back pressure here that it'll actually blow exhaust into the crankcase, which I don't really want to do that. But another thing I could maybe test is uh, removing the middle section of my exhaust just so it's like a dump tube. I do have a V-band down there, so I'd be able to see if just reducing that pressure enough will make a difference. And then if it works really well, I'll keep it, and then I'll weld another one in on this side so I can have two of them drawing on the crankcase. If not, I'll just set it up. If not, I'll just convert it back to how it was. And that fitting down there that I welded in is actually the same thread as an O2 sensor. The kit did come with some plugs, so if it doesn't work, I'll just put the plug in it until I put a second O2 sensor in there. Or at least I have a fitting in there for a second O2. So let's do that. I gotta put some E85 in it, then I'll go drive it a little bit and see if we can get anything noticeable. So I wanted to start the data log portion of it with getting a baseline of what the pressure is before we start looking at the data logs. So this was just key on, not running, started the data log, and I wanted to see what the crankcase pressure on the gauge on the sensor actually showed. It shows 95 kPa. Uh, the peak was 96. Somewhere in there it hit 96, um, but it's pretty much at 95. So we'll use 95 as a reference point for how much the crankcase pressure is actually changing. So this is basically at rest with the engine not running. So I'll bring up both files and I'll do a compare. I'm going to click on 54 and 55. We'll bring up 54 and then I'm going to go up to compare and then I'll open up 55. So here's the raw data from both tests. So top line is just the catch can setup without the scavenge hooked up. The bottom purple line here is the test with the scavenge line hooked up to the crankcase. So first thing you can see right off the bat is the scavenge line is actually lower pretty much the entire duration. And what I think is interesting on both of them is they do have this slight downward angle. So I don't know what's causing that. If it has something to do with like the exhaust gas temperature heating up or the exhaust tubing heating up. But it is interesting that it does seem like the pressure in the crankcase is actually improving as we were going through the testing. So using that 95 kPa mark as a reference, let's kind of run through this. So the top line, we'll click in a couple spots here. We're at 98, 98. Here we're at 98, here we're at 97. So pretty much the whole time with the original setup, just the catch can, I'm slightly higher pressure in the crankcase than when I had the scavenge hooked up. So going from 95 to 98 is only about a third of a pound of pressure, so it's really not a lot. But I feel like that's important that it is actually slightly higher pressure. Now if we compare to the scavenge, 
It pretty much started out at 96, so slightly above the 95. Right down here, we're at 95, and then here it actually hits as low as 93. So if you look at the minimum, so if we look at this min max area right here, both of them maxed out at 103, but the scavenge setup actually did drop below the 95 at its lowest point. The majority of the time just cruising was around that 95 area right here, which means that with the scavenge hooked up, while I was cruising and driving, it was at 95 kPa, which is exactly what it is at rest with the engine off. Without the scavenge hooked up, it was at around 97 the whole time, so it's still making slightly higher crankcase pressure the whole time without that scavenge hooked up. So now if we start looking at uh, the boost lines, those little blue spikes, where I started to get into boost a little bit, you can see this one was making around 13 pounds. This one is actually around 13.7 up in this area. And if we just look at the min max for boost, with the scavenge, I was up to 13.7 pounds of boost, which is not related to the scavenge itself. It's just how I was driving it. So I actually made more boost pressure than the peak on the first run without the scavenge. It was making about three pounds more boost, but I think it's notable that it still showed the same amount of crankcase pressure. So even though it was making more power, making more boost, both examples made the same amount of crankcase pressure. So I'm going to smooth this a little bit just to make it a little bit easier to look at. So here you can see this peak is with the scavenge, this peak is with the scavenge, this peak is with the scavenge, and then these other three in the middle were just the catch can by itself. So what I think is interesting is all three of the runs with the scavenge hooked up, I made more boost than when I was driving it with just the catch can, but all three of the peaks are equal or lower than just the catch can itself. So again, making more boost in all three of those situations, and it was making equal or lower crankcase pressure. Uh, another thing that I think is pretty interesting is this area here, this is when I was on the trans brake on the second test with the scavenge hooked up. So this is the boost area for the trans brake test, and it's 3.2 pounds. And if we look here, the scavenge is only at 96 kPa with three pounds of boost. And this section here without the scavenge just cruising was at 98 kPa. So just cruising with just the catch can, not in boost at all, 1500 RPM, 24 miles an hour just cruising, 3% throttle, it's making 98 kPa crankcase pressure, which is 3 kPa more than just baseline. 3 kPa is about a third of a pound of pressure. Now on the other hand, on the trans brake, 0 miles per hour, 3100 RPM, 3 pounds of boost, it was actually making less crankcase pressure only one KPA more than just I, just with it sitting off in the garage. So I think that little test right there is pretty telling because this is just cruising and this is actually like wide open trying to make power three pounds of boost and it still didn't even make as much pressure as when I was just cruising. Okay, so I'm gonna go on a little bit of a ramble about what I saw here. One of the main concerns that I had with it was, is it gonna blow exhaust gas into the crankcase? I think it's safe to say from this test that it's not actually blowing exhaust gas back into the crankcase because you would have seen higher crankcase pressure in the boost areas. So the peak on both was 103. All three of the pulls with the scavenge hooked up for the test made more boost. So even though it was making up to three pounds more boost than the control, and by control I mean just the catch can setup, even though it was making more boost on each pull, it didn't exceed the pressure that we made on the control. So that tells me that it's not blowing exhaust gas back into the crankcase. Another thing to think is this is only one hooked up. So this is only one hooked up on the passenger side. I do have a second one. This is just this little guy here. This is this little bung that you weld on and kind of looks like that. It goes in there at an angle, creates a vacuum, and then pulls air through it. So I do have a second one. And now I'm actually curious because this is only one of them and it was enough to make a noticeable change on the cruising pressure and it didn't have a negative impact on the crankcase pressure in boost. 
And just one of them was enough to reduce the the cruising crankcase pressure down to where it was when it was sitting off in the garage. So remember in the screen capture, I said 95 with it just sitting just like this, not running, key on, it's at 95. Cruising without this hooked up, it was at like 97, 98. So that's making almost a third of a pound of pressure, crankcase pressure, all the time when it's cruising. So slight pressure, this was enough to take it down to where it's almost not making any pressure at all. This in combination with the, with the catch can. So that makes me wonder now, if this was enough to make uh, a two to three KPA change with just one hooked up, would a second one reduce it by another two to three KPA and then you would essentially be drawing a slight vacuum all the time while it's cruising. I'd still run this together with the catch can. I'd still be expecting some type of crankcase pressure while I was getting into boost, especially over 14 pounds and getting into, you know, mid 20 pounds, 30 pounds, I would expect some crankcase pressure. So I'd be curious to see what it does at that level. It'd be really cool if it would actually draw vacuum while I was cruising, because it does, I do have some oil leaks and I think that's from crankcase pressure, especially I was making a thousand horsepower and did a lot of like 800 range horsepower pulls. It does have some slight oil leaks, like the bottom of the pan is wet and stuff. And that's kind of my reason for wanting to test this was I want to see if I can get something that's going to draw a slight vacuum on the crankcase and prevent any potential leaks from positive crankcase pressure. So I'm interested to test this a little bit more. I think after what I saw today, I would like to hook the second one up. I don't know if I'm going to do it anytime soon because I did order a roll cage for this and that should be here one of these days and I want to start working on getting the cage and stuff in there. Uh, but I think this is worth pursuing a little bit more, hooking up the second one and see what it does. I would like to maybe do some testing with no catch can and just see, one, how much the catch can actually affects it, and two, you might be able to get a better understanding of exactly what these do by themselves. So that's this test. Uh, I will say I don't hate it. Granted, that wasn't a very extensive test. It was uh, just two short drives and about three pulls on the street. But one, I did see a difference. It did improve cruising and it didn't negatively impact the boost areas. So I think I won't throw this in the garbage and I might hook up the other one. Let me know what you think.